Thank you so much for having me. That was a lovely introduction. And uh, I'm excited to hear it. you felt drawn thinking, yeah. I am. Connect. Well, here's the thing. I and and we were just talking beforehand, and um, Christine is all the way in Norway, and I'm mm -hmm. in Toronto, and we were saying how amazing this is that people can connect from all over the world. And I almost feel like this whole pandemic, that's like the one positive thing I could say about it, is that I have really seen that flourish in this connection. So, you know, maybe start, Christine, with telling us. Okay, you're a psychic, you're a medium, uh, you're a spiritual advisor. Like, how did this all begin with you? Oh, man. It, it started like as a child, I would see spirits, I would not be comfortable around a lot of people. And I will often be very afraid because energies could be very intense. I remember sleeping was the thing that I struggled with. And not having a safe space to really understand what it was about until I grew a little bit older and my mom started supporting me and understanding that I do have these, um, not necessarily skills, but gifts yes. of seeing and connecting with energy in, in a different way than it's normal. But it was definitely a scary and not a pleasant experience growing up and I almost feel like I am a little bit traumatized because I don't like touch and I didn't understand like why. And it wasn't before like actually a few months ago where I'm like, okay, where is this anchored? Where Where is this coming from? But spirits would, you know, poke or touch or, you know, touch my hair and like get really close. So I am oh traumatized by spirits. But um, as I grew older, I started to get more confident and a little bit more um, used to this kind of environment. And my mom always had an open door to talk about this stuff. And she introduced me to tarot when I was nine. Uh, so we kind of like had a little bit of that spiritual connection. So but your mom, does your mom have these same um, gifts as well? Well, um, my mom passed away sadly back in 2012, but she did have a very strong intuition. She also had several very negative experiences as well. Um, so she never felt comfortable really diving into it and using it on a daily, even though that her intuition was sharp, but she would close up a lot when it came to her own gift. Oh, wow. Okay. So I could see that being really scary as a child. Is that, is that typical with most people who are truly psychic? It starts when they're children? I would say yes to people that I'm connected with that I have um, come across have this gift from, from early on. I, there's only one person that I can think of that kind of like had this to grow as she got older. But it was because she was um, going through a lot of trauma. And when you go through trauma, the body goes into hyper focus. And then you're learning how to read energy. So you're coming into that uh, state uh, of, of really tuning in. So that was something that kind of like developed for her in later years. But most most of us, I find it is from, from childhood. Yeah. So, you know, those, the thing is, is that let's face facts, psychics can get a bad rap, right? Absolutely. That they can be scammers, scam mm -hmm. artists, they can feed off of clues of, of individuals. And so, you know, how, because I know I'm always interested in this type of thing. Mm -hmm. Since I was young, not because I have any gifts, but because I find it fascinating and I find it interesting. So how does one know when someone is truly psychic or if it's a scam? How do you know that? That's a really, really good question. I mean, when it comes to the intention you set for whatever that you do, it kind of like gives a clear vibe. But I know just like traveling and experiencing that there are psychics out there that they put fear in you. First of all, that's a warning sign. They let you come into their space and they're like, you need a cleanse. That's going to be $400 or you need this crystal. It's going to be like, it's a sales technique usually wrapped into that. And you walk away feeling fearful. 
uh, and thinking that you really need this service that they have. So that's one of the things. And also, again, trying to figure out why you're searching to go to a psychic in the first place, if there's something that you can support yourself with to really tap into solving that issue and not to go to a psychic just because like I made a video about, is he the one that people really loved? But going to a psychic to ask is, am I with my soulmate? Will I meet my soulmate? All of these questions that are very coming from a space of victimization almost and worry. And, and psychics out there, they make a lot of money uh, helping or like talking to people that are worried. So kind of check in with yourself. Like, am I in a space where I'm ready to hear what might come my way? Um, yeah. Okay. That makes sense because um, often people go and see a psychic when they're in a place of, like you said, worry. Yeah. Or uncertainty in their lives, mm -hmm. or they need answers. So yourself, when you do meet with somebody, because I'm always curious, how like how do you do that? Like, do you you do you answer questions? Do you like how do you start with somebody? What if somebody comes to you and just doesn't have any questions and just wants to feel, I guess, what you're what you're seeing? Yeah, I mean, I work in many different ways, but I have very strong boundaries to how I would like to work. And okay. my intention for everything that I do, it has to have a healing purpose for you. I don't want you to walk away feeling like, oh, I need to talk to Christine again. I would like to use anything that I can for um, my client to feel confident and strong in themselves with homework and tools after a session. And I'm also um, a yoga teacher and a breath coach and NLP master and practitioner. So whatever that I know about uh, emotions and breakthroughs and how you can connect to yourself in a more spiritual uh, way, that's what I like to focus on. I focus on the real big picture and um, things that really matter. So when people call me to ask about, am I, you know, can I trust my husband or anything like that? So then I got to teach them to re redirect that energy back to themselves because it's so easy to give away your power. And yes. my purpose is for my clients to really connect with their power. Okay, that makes sense. Now, is there, are, are most psychics also mediums? Because a medium, just explain, if you could explain what the difference is between the what is a psychic, what is a medium? Well, I am uh, a little bit still discussing with myself of what I think about it. But what they teach you is that psychics can see past, present, and future, sometimes tap into past lifetimes. As a medium, you connect with spirit. And um, for me as a psychic, I'm picking up things from the past and present and future and sometimes past lives from spirit as well. So it's very enmeshed. And I feel these names are often to make it, to try and make something clear, but it, you're an energy reader and you connect uh, with energy or with spirits. Okay. So really you could have somebody come to you who wants to, um, speak with somebody who is past. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. And then you could also have somebody come to you who would like just a plain reading of maybe yeah. past lives. So you kind of, you kind of do all of it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. That totally makes sense. So let's, let's get into spiritual journeys. Yeah. Because, and, and awakenings. Because mm. I feel, so I work with a lot of people who are over the age of 40 who have come to crossroads in their lives mm. where things have caused them, I guess I'm one of them, to look at different areas of spirituality. So I was brought up you know, I was brought up as a Catholic girl. Um, I didn't go to Catholic school or anything like that. But you know, I was brought up in a Catholic home. Um, however, I, I still remember when I was younger that my mom saw a psychic. So it's not like they would be like, Oh, that's taboo, or that's evil. Right. 
They didn't put that in my mind. But what happened when I was in my 40s, we had a lot of illness, in including with myself. And I felt like the Catholic strict constructs, I will say, didn't serve me anymore. Yeah. So as a spiritual advisor, how do you help somebody who feels stuck? Because I feel um, having spiritual guidance, whatever resonates with you, is so important in life. Mm. Yeah. For people that are stuck, that has been an energy that kind of comes and goes. But I have plenty of clients that that talk about that feeling of stuckness. And we strip things down to the basic and we talk about, first of all, we have to ground our energy. We have to connect with earth, first of all, because we are born here to, uh, you know, we're born here at Mama Earth. We need to connect with that energy of our home. And when we connect to that, we automatically open up as well. And we align our energy. It's very amazing for energetic health to spend time back in nature and just having that direct contact with earth. So when you're in this um, way and connection, you automatically come to a place of silence and being able to really feel what you feel. And once those feelings are coming to surface, you can really sit with them and cry them out, write them out, journal about it and whatnot. And then you will remove this feeling of stuckness because then emotions are coming out and it's coming back to a flow. And often people feel stuck because they're tired. They're extremely tired. So taking a time out in nature as well is very supportive. But basically trying to remove them from the rut that they are in and give them some confidence and connection that they can give to themselves. I love that because, um, you know, it's interesting because I, I am in this whole world of biohackers and, you know, people start to rhyme it off. Okay. Spend time in nature, 15 minutes here. And, da -da -da -da. and, and it's almost like they're, they're, it's sometimes it feels like they're doing it because, okay, that's number one, ground in nature. Number two, Go outside in the first thing in the morning and reset your circadian rhythm. And then number three, you know what I mean? It's almost like it's become so structured yeah. versus allowing your body to say, you know what? I really feel like I need to get out in nature today. Yeah. Like you must have, because as opposed to following instructions, what, how do you help your clients feel that feeling of what they need when they, like you said, I guess silence would be one of the methods, right? Yeah. Well, it depends what they need, but usually if it has anything to do with um, supporting their spiritual awakening or supporting their intuition or supporting their feeling of stuckness, we always get back to the basic, which is nature. And then also creating a safe space that you can practice your spirituality and i look spirituality as a connection to who you really are your spirit and then you got to remove yourself from instagram and tv and everything else that makes a lot of noise to have a place in your house that you can continuously to come back to sit down and journal do yoga breath work whatever it is but kind of have a place where you anchor yourself so that you can be with you that's uh, usually very helpful. Do you feel like society has become very unanchored? Absolutely, uh, 100%. Yeah. We forget where we belong. We forget why we're here. We feel like we don't have purpose. We're chasing the one high after the other. And we're simply, a lot of us doing what is easy in a survival mode because we're not enough energetically connected to what really fuels us. And it's a sense of home, sense of peace, sense of purpose. And it all comes back to taking timeouts and connecting with earth and why we're here. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. I mean, I even there's so many people that come to me, they're like, I want to lose weight. I've tried this diet. I've tried that diet. And I'm like, you need to just listen to your body and you yeah. need to just 
feel first off and then you know like you said go back go back yeah. to nature go back i say the same thing with our food system i'm like go back to how it was done centuries ago yes. eat the food as close as you possibly can eat like our great 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 grandparents ate yeah yeah right? so i think really the message is here when you go back to that you're really feeling your spirit mm, exactly does that make sense to you it does it does and food is one of the things that i often discuss with my clients because our spirit is very high energy high frequency and our body is the medium and what you eat and put into your body if it's a low frequency that will make an unbalancement with the body because it's not the same frequency as the soul so if you want to tap into your intuition if you want to support your spiritual awakening treating your lifestyle and what you eat with high frequency activities and food is crucial oh my god i love that you said that because i've actually read a bit about this about how food also holds energy yeah. and you know like you're if you're eating food i like i am not i'm not a believer in any specific diets but you know, if you're, for example, eating McDonald's and you're eating food from feedlot beef, yeah, um, and and the conditions, you're actually energetically putting that in your body. So not only is it bad nutrient wise, but it's mm -hmm. also energetically. Look what you're putting you're putting into your body, yeah, right? like suffering. And and I, I, you know, this isn't what this podcast is about, but. If you look at feedlots, it's just repulsive what happens. That's why I will not support feedlots ever. Yeah. Um, so I love that you said that. Now, what would you say to somebody? Okay. Let's say I come to you. Okay. We talked about silence. We talked about nature. What if they're doing all those things that we talked about? And then they say, you know what? I just, I just can't connect to spirit. To I can't. How would you help them? That's really hard because in my 15 years experience working the way I do, I've never had a client that has been really connected with earth and connected to silence and connected in that way, not being able to also feel good in their intuition. So for me that I, I, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I would probably support them with, you know, continuing to do high frequency things as train and go for walks and eating healthy and really, you know, just continuing supporting yourself. And sometimes intuition and that connection, it's there, but they don't recognize it. Yeah, I feel, and I, I mean, I shouldn't really talk about my husband, but I feel like he just never wants to go there. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he just, I don't know. I, I, I joke with him. I'm like, do you even have a soul? Like, yeah. I don't know. Like, do you see a difference between men and women? Because I feel like there is one. Mm -hmm. Well, I, um, I feel like a lot of men, first of all, have problems understanding their own emotional self. To tap into their spiritual self can just feel like it's so far off. So I think to take care of their emotional self is something that they need to do prior to tapping into any spiritual energy. <laughs> I think <laughs> that makes so much sense, Christine, because I'm like, okay, well, there's a few patterns here that I see, lack of emotion, lack yeah. of <laughs> right yeah. but what i do love is that my husband supports me and and whatever yeah. i do so yeah. that's all that matters to me you know it's his his life really his body i can't make him yeah be something that he's not or that he's not willing to see right yeah but when i see men that are really in tune with themselves and they have no problems tapping into their spirituality one of my best friends is just unbelievable intelligent like emotionally and um spiritually and all of that because he's so comfortable with himself and he's been you know reparenting himself and coming to a place where he feels really grounded and safe so i would say that that particular person is probably way better than my fe feminine friends again so it really depends 
as long as you're in tune with with yourself and and rooted i don't see difference with men and 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 women per se okay that's good to know now um here's a question for you how do you because we talk a lot about energy grounding yourself how do you yourself as a psychic not allow certain energies to impact you yeah. now you're an adult right yeah. so as a child it's probably pretty difficult to know what to do with all of this right yes yes when i was a child i would feel fearful when spirit was around and i would give off a lot of energy in that way and spirit loves that especially spirit that haven't crossed over like ghost they are like vampires like energetic vampires and when you're afraid you release a lot of energy which they kind of feed on as i grew older i learned that oh i can actually set energetic boundaries by saying stop leave go away so it was more about what i was willing to give out as well and i always cleanse my space i cleanse all my mirrors protect them and how do you do that how, how do you cleanse your space yeah so the mirror thing i think we can talk about because that everybody can really do it's pretty easy it's any mirror of the house you visualize rose bush growing around it and you can see the thorns but you also see the beautiful flowers and this serves as a protection in the mirror okay so that's something i would really really recommend and for like house cleanses it gets a really a little bit more complicated but it is an energetic visualization that I do. Um, you have to just protect the space. But my, um, yeah, my my biggest lesson was just to be really firm uh, when I have spirit trying to, yeah, to come too close. And also to really talk about grounding even more today is that when you ground your energy, earth energy actually helps uh, as a protective shield as well for energy uh, coming in and going like towards you. So I, I always ground energy super, super like it's so important. I do it every time before I work and um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, um, in one of the books that I've been reading, it's, it's about sharpening your intuition. I was talking to you about that earlier. Yeah. Um, it says, so I found this interesting because you know how they say stand in in the grass, stand on any kind of a natural stone in yeah. the, in the uh, in the dirt um, on a beach, whatever it is that's more of a natural uh, substance of the earth. But one thing that I I learned, and I think this is kind of neat, whenever you're feeling ungrounded or flighty, I actually go down with my toes. And then my knees, my forearms, hands, and forehead. Mm -hmm. have, you, have you heard of this? No. Well, it's Anyway, I've done it since I read it in this book. And I found it, like, then I get up and I feel somehow, I don't know, I guess it's because you have the palms of your hands, the soles mm -hmm. of your feet, your knees, your elbows, your forehead down on the ground. It yeah. just makes you feel good. It's like you get up and then you're like, ah. Oh, I don't know. Just it's like a reset, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um so talk to me about I'm very fascinated with signs and symbols. Mm. I actually did a podcast on this because I'm a big believer in different signs. So I will often when I I'm confused about something, if I'm upset about something and I don't really understand or can process my feelings, I'll go and I'll walk in nature and I will ask for signs. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Does Is that kind of crazy or does that? No. I think spirit or helpers and our guides are so excited to be able to help us and they can't interfere unless that we ask to. So when we ask for signs, they're like, oh, she she needs us. Let's let's dive in, give her a So it's like more an excitement I find from spirit. And it's it's really neat. I have I have the same thing with my grandfather who passed away uh, back in 2012 as well. And 
he used to drive this like standard Mercedes Benz, like gray car. Like it's very common here in Norway for elder men to drive this particular car. And there's not a one time I'm driving without seeing that several times on the road. And I'm like, what is the point with this sign? So, and then he just simply said to me, well, I'm, I'm with you on the road. And I always thought that that was so nice, like a nice way to do it and uh, to show that, you know, I don't have to have a bad day for him to show his present. And uh, I thought that was really beautiful. I do think that's beautiful. And I actually, I have a little sign that we, we have a, we don't have a large backyard. We have a small backyard, but we have a pool and um, we're, our backyard is really surrounded by trees. And every year since, oh, it's been quite a few years, but I feel like, and I, maybe this sounds crazy. I don't know. Maybe I'm going to cut this out, but I feel <laughs> like my mother-in-law, she passed away. It's three years now. And we were quite close to uh, my mother-in-law, my husband's mom. And I always feel like when I think about her, the Cardinals come into my backyard. Yeah. They come on my walk. And so my, I can't remember, somebody bought me a sign that mm -hmm. it something about cardinals and spirit comes here. So it's not like, and, and then of course I said this to my husband and he's like, oh yeah, my mother's coming back as a cardinal. I'm like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm like, no, no. I'm saying that it's her spirit just coming yeah. to say, hey, like yeah. do you believe in that. I don't believe that they are the actual signs, but I believe that they play a part in showing you the signs. So, okay. So you know how you can go and you can read about snakes. And if a snake crosses your path, it means this. Mm -hmm. Or if you, so what do you think of all of that? As a sign or just? Yeah, as a sign or a yeah. sign people ask me like what does this sign mean what does that sign mean and i'm like i don't know you tell me because the signs that are given given to you is often meant for you to understand meant for you to receive that message so some people you know get feathers that's very common yes the rest symbol of you know heaven and angels and kind of like that divine energy and uh I often ask my clients, what is the first things like that comes up in you when you see that feather? Oh, support, 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 recognition, like just feeling a validation. And I'm like, great, that's awesome. That's, that's what it's trying to tell you. So then I guess you could say when we see something that jumps out at us, yeah, then that is some sort this is the way I describe it that's some sort of sign if it's an anomaly so mm -hmm. I'll give you an example I was really pondering something a few months ago and it was it was falling kind of heavy on my heart mm -hmm. and I was I, I go to this one little place it's a forest not far from my house and I stood there and I'm like okay I mean give me a sign like come on and there was no wind there was nothing nothing yeah. around me it was dead silent and yet there was this one leaf from a tree and it was rattling like crazy right in front of my face i'm like that's my sign yeah so do you believe that that makes more sense so instead of saying okay well that leaf meant da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah it's like something that's an anomaly does that is that a good way to describe it to somebody yeah, yeah absolutely that's kind of how i look at it but it depends, like signs come like usually in very stressful periods of time where you're also wondering, should I go left or right? And universe and your helpers and that love is just trying to sh support you in any decisions that you, you know, that you take, that you're not alone. But there's also like with past loved ones that they will show a repeated thing that makes you remember them so that you are connected to their energy in that moment. So uh, it's, it's it's different, yeah. Yeah, I feel like you know there's a few things there for sure, with my mother-in-law who passed, mm -hmm. and you know I, I I I'm I'm just but I'm also I would say a good ten years into 
my own awakening, but I'm constantly evolving. Yeah. Constantly picking up new things and learning new things. So because I have to ask this because there in certain religions, it's taboo to mm. talk about tarot cards and Oracle cards. And, you know, I have all of it. I have it mm. all because yeah. I don't believe that there's any evil and I'm doing little air quotes here mm -hmm. um, because I don't believe that it's evil. I don't believe that I'm sitting there with my crystal ball, you know, making all these horrible things happen to be, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, um, because in certain religions, it is taboo. And why? Why is that? I find religion often, uh, not necessarily the religion, but people that are in believing in that religion often don't want you to think outside of what you're being taught because it's better to keep things structured and safe and don't like run off with any ideas like yeah. let's let's all be here <laughs> yeah. so once you're starting to you know evolve and, and tap into spirituality and denying that spirituality can be quite damaging for your health and your relationship so i find like i understand that people find a lot of safety in having a certain belief system but stepping out from it you're also safe but it's just like to learn how to explore more on your own i don't know if i answered your question there but it's just i think it's very common that religion does not support anything that has something else to do with the topic that is also energetically in. Yeah. No, that did answer my question. I, I feel like, you know, maybe a lot of it too is, and, and I am not, I'm going to say this right now. I am not knocking any religion here whatsoever. Mm -hmm. I do want to preface that because I believe that everyone has a choice on believing what they believe, want to believe in. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I'm just not, I'm very open and I believe that you should do and feel like I honestly, I have practices that are maybe Buddhist. I have practices that go from ancient, um, civilizations. I have, I practice feng shui. I do it all. I pray. I believe in God, you know, but I also kind of make up not make up but even borrow things that really resonate with me just a yeah. heart yeah and a head actually yeah so what about children so here's something interesting i want to talk about so i asked my kids were raised catholic just because i wanted to expose them to something and that's mm -hmm. all i knew growing up and i asked this was my daughter when she was quite a bit younger i asked her one day i said what do you think about god and she looked at me, she goes, I really don't think about God. <laughs> and you know, she was <laughs> this is probably when she was about 12. And it made me laugh. I'm like, okay then. Yeah. And so how do you help your children to mm -hmm. become more energetically grounded, more spiritual, not necessarily in a religious sense, or can be whatever it is that you want? How yeah. Do you do that? I First of all, I feel like I'm a very normal mama. Spirituality isn't something that is the huge topic here at home, but we have conversations about it. We watch sometimes on YouTube people or kids that have experienced past lives that remember them. And I remember when the kids were really young, I used to ask them, do you remember when you used to be an adult? To try and see if they would remember their oh, lives. Because as a children you still have access to some of that memory but here we do you know they know about the crystals and they know about that sometimes dreams can be really important to share and um that it's okay that none of their friends believe that mama can speak to ghosts <laughs> So there is like they have to deal with a little bit of that conflict still, but they seem okay with it. And both of my children are quite psychic and have a very strong intuition, which I support by creating good conversations around it. And can you see things in your own children or do you just not go there? 
No, I see very little and it's so frustrating to me. I can't like, I, I'm like, what are you thinking? How do you feel? And I just had my oldest start to journal because I want him to start being aware of his emotions and how he can uh, understand himself a little bit better by, by journaling. And I'm like, can I please read it? <laughs> <laughs> but no, I see, I see nothing. I, I have no idea what they're going to do when they grow up or how, how their life is going to evolve. All I know is that uh, I'll do my best to be the best support system they can have. I, I actually have heard that from a couple of people who yeah. I've spoken with who have psychic and deep intuition that they can't really get a read on their own kids. Mm -mm. So yeah. I find that interesting. Now, okay, you mentioned dreams. Yeah, how do dreams fall into all of this? Well, in dream state, it's easier to connect to to your true self, your intuition, and also go really deep subconsciously as well. So I find dreams to be incredibly interesting because there's a lot of answers and a lot of information to where you're at in your life. And my kids, especially my oldest, he can sometimes have dreams that are repeated. Okay. And I asked him, I'm like, okay, you want to talk about it? And then he explains to me that he um, experienced my family that has crossed over that spent time with him. Oh, and wow. uh, that's really, yeah, that's really, really good for me in a way that knowing my kids still get to see them and be with my family because I lost, I lost my parents and uh, my uncle and aunt and um, my grandfather. So it's an all in like that spam when the kids were really young or I was pregnant with my, my youngest. So it was very beautiful to know that they are interacting with my children in, in their dream state. So you believe that dreams are really a part of our subconscious? Well, I feel like it's part of something bigger. Like you can tap into so much, so much information in dream state, either through your subconscious or your soul travels or, you know, spirit is coming to you and you're kind of really receptive and open in, in that time. So how do you help somebody who wants to have better dream recall? I mean, I've, I've heard so many different things, Christine. I've heard that you can use herbs for this like mugwort mm -hmm. supposedly amazing to help sharpen that intuition and dream recall like yeah. how, how does somebody get better at it well sleep on your back first of all that's one i dream so that's one of the best things that i can say and also set the intention like help me remember my dreams more like set out that intention and that goal and when you wake up start to journal how do you feel is there anything that you know you're feeling that might have been triggered from a dream so like starting having a little ritual to journal your dreams or journal how you feel in the morning setting intention that this is what you want to achieve and uh yeah sleep on your sleep on your back <laughs> okay, i'm gonna you know what because i have tried that before and i will say that that does work where you set the intention before bed to say I'm going to be more attuned to what I'm dreaming yes. and you know how that happens where you wake up and then you get up to go to the washroom or something and then poof, it's gone. If you yeah. don't write it down, it's just, it's gone. And then there's those dreams. And I actually saw something. It was so funny. I was like on Instagram where, I don't know, the wife, the husband was sleeping and then the wife dreamt that he was cheating on her and she started slapping him or something like, <laughs> Anyway, I find that so funny because yeah. I've had those dreams where you wake up and you just have that feeling of angst. Yeah. And so is that like, what is that? Is that your subconscious trying to tell you something? Is that a, some, I find that so fascinating and yeah. I, I just don't understand where it comes from. Well, I find that dreams often help you to release emotions and the brain will do whatever it can to support you to release that. So like you're saying, to release anxiety. Because 
dreaming about your husband cheating and whatnot, it isn't necessarily what's true, but it's more about the emotion it brings out in you. And I also find that dreams are very much, um, what is that word? It, it means something else. So I dream a lot that I'm in water and water represents emotions. So sometimes the water is wavy and sometimes the water is really dark and I'm scared. And then when I wake up and I'm like, yeah, I am in an emotionally really challenging place right now. So it kind of mirrors how I feel and getting more in tune with, with myself. Okay. Yeah. So then you can actually piece, piece it together and make mm -hmm. the connection. Yeah. yeah. But I think like, you know, if you were to go back to the very start of this conversation, if you're not, if you're feeling disconnected, you're never going to be able to connect that anyway. Right. right. So it's like, you have to start at the beginning. Yeah. Right. Um, and then you mentioned crystals. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of crystals as well. And like, what, what, how do you use them? How do you cleanse them? What is your process with crystals? I don't use crystals for anything that I do. I use them intuitively to decorate my space. I can feel what needs to be here and what needs to be there. Um, and um, yeah, I know friends who keep tiny crystals in their bag or in their uh, pockets or some even tuck their bra full of rocks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> But that's not my connection with crystals because crystals came into my life way later than spirituality and tarot and all of that. It's kind of like the latest, yeah, two, three years that I've introduced crystals into my space to kind of feel out. But okay. when I'm shopping for crystals, I go for what I feel very drawn to. And then I read what it's about and I'm like, oh, it supports trauma. Ew, this is this and this is that. Okay, I totally understand. So I'm just kind of like following my energy when it comes to, to crystals. Yeah, I feel that's really important. And I'll, I'll never forget um, when my mother-in-law passed. I don't know why I'm bringing this up so much, but it's just, it's coming up in this conversation. But uh, one of my best friends bought us each an Apache tear. It's a type of crystal and you're supposed to hold on to it um, until you're finished grieving. And then when you're finished grieving, you put it back to the earth. Mm. And so I did a little ceremony with my children mm. and I think it really helped them. Like one of my kids had it under their pillow. Yeah. And so I feel energetically there is something to crystals. It Like you, you were saying at the beginning, it comes from the earth, right? So, okay, I guess we're coming closer to the end, but I, I mean, I could talk, I feel like I could talk to you forever. <laughs> I feel like I can ask you so many questions. Um, can anyone read tarot cards or those Oracle cards? Cause Oracle cards more so than tarot cards are really, really big right now. You know, where you you buy a deck, you knock mm -hmm. on it, you shuffle, and then certain cards will come flying out. And then there's the tarot, which is more of the um, the traditional type of yeah. card reading. I think Oracle came much later. And yeah. tarot is more like answering questions, or you can do past, present, future. Can anybody do this? Absolutely. Tarot is a great tool if you want to have a spiritual practice and start to really see if you can connect with your intuition because as you shuffle the deck, you can pick out the cards that really fly out and then look at it and try and pick up what you're feeling and sensing first before reading what it actually means if you're not, if you don't know tarot and its description. And I find tarot to be more of a deeper practice than oracle oracle is very i feel brushing the surface and with tarot it's brutal sometimes <laughs> like tarot's really honest and really yes goes in depth in things uh i did have an oracle deck and and i i really didn't connect with it well because i i um despite that i don't always love getting the truth it was what supported me the best yeah. So, okay. So then it's, it's kind of a, I think of it as 
I don't know, maybe fun is not the right word, but you know, even sometimes I'll, I'll just say to my daughter, I'll be like, let's pull some tarot cards or let's pull some Oracle cards or whatever. And so would you say that the way that it works is your energy comes through or so, cause you can do readings yourself. You can do tarot readings for people who are um, through zoom or, yeah. you know, how does that even work? It's energy work and I rely on my deck to give the answers that are supportive because that's the intention that I put in the deck. That's the energy I put into it. And when I'm shuffling it, I believe it's part of the big energetic picture that it's being supportive because that's the energy that I put into it. And um, that's how I do all my readings. The best way is either, you know, through a phone call or through Zoom where I do this thing. But it's, um, I believe it's a part of me and I believe it's a part of the energetic connection that I have with this person. Okay, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I find that amazing, Christine. I absolutely love this conversation with you. Me too. I could probably go on and on about so many different things because it's been about a decade that I've been on my own spiritual journey, I would yeah. say. And I, I, I just keep going, right? Yeah. Keep going and I keep learning from other people. So one last question before we close off. Yeah. What is the best advice you would give somebody who really wants to sharpen their intuition and listen to what their body is telling them, what inside is saying about a situation versus just always acting from the brain? Well, it is the theme of today's session. It's definitely go take a dive in the ocean, whatever that you can do to really be connected with earth, but also removing these things that are stressful. Phones, um, sometimes family members, <laughs> like take yeah. some time, time out because that we need to also get an outlet to release who we really are. And we can't do that in stressful places either. Tapping into something that makes you feel creative and that you get to express yourself is a great way for you to tap into your intuition, to kind of follow the energy, how you want to express yourself. And that could look like, you know, decorating or trying on, you know, a new wardrobe or, or whatever it is. But creativity is definitely a space where intuition grows. Mm, I agree with that. I mean, I used to write poetry when I was in university and that kind of stopped after mm -hmm. because I just don't have the time with a yeah. busy family and a, I'm running a business. I'm like, I used to have way more time for that sort of thing when I was a lazy student, right? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, okay. Well, thank you so much, Christine. I would love for you to tell uh, my audience where we can find you. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, my personal Instagram, where you will find mostly my mediumship and meditation journals. And in that space, it's christine.fredheim. And if you're into tarot and astrology and more in a bigger picture of the spirituality, in that sense, it's Soul Life Magic on Instagram. I have a website. Um, if you want to book a reading with me, you can either go to my personal Instagram and my link in bio or go to christinefredheim.com. And if you want to shop the soul cards, the tarot cards that I created in memory of my mama, you can go to soulcardstarot.com. Oh, you created those in memory of your mom? I saw yeah. them. They're beautiful. Thank you. Yeah, I wanted to do something that I could honor the space that she made for me oh. in the spiritual side. And I always found spirituality to be really strange and weird. It was hard for me to find a place that really um, supported my vision and who I was in, without having to look a certain way or to have a certain card deck. So I made a deck in memory of my mom, but also made it beautiful so that people can be proud of their tarot deck and not like hide it when people come over. Like it's a piece to have on your table. 
And that's kind of my in intention with everything I do with spirituality is to make it more relatable for um, people to, to uh, be proud of their practice. Well, I feel like your energy is amazing. And mm -hmm. I think thank thank you. I will have all of this information in my show notes. And mm -hmm. I'd really like to thank you for your time, Christine. Thank you so much for having me. It's beautiful to connect. Yes. Okay. I stopped recording. That was lovely. And I mm -hmm. feel very authentic, which is really the way I like to do things. So yeah, that's thank so you. exciting. It was Thank very nice so to meet you. And actually, I think the timing was really